How are we doing? Great. Good. <laughs> are we doing okay? Are we doing okay? Um, it's funny. It's really crazy to be back in here. Wendy was my professor, you know, years ago, and uh, I definitely remember being in this room at some point. Can't remember what class was going on, but. Um, it's pretty fun to be back up here. So thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. I know it's Monday. It's the end of a long day. <clears throat> it's spring, so thanks for being here. I know everyone's kind of starting to shut things down now. But to make sure we got some good energy here to kick this thing off, I just want everybody to stand up. We just got to get some good energy here going. I think that's what we need. Oh, there we go. Now you can hear it. Just come on. You can move around if you want to. You can smile. It's OK. I know you might not be able to hear it OK, but it's going to be good enough for now, right? Anybody like to dance in here? You double time it. It's OK. It's OK. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. That's enough. No more partying. Sit down. All right, so I'm going to kick it off with a story here real quick. And um, obviously, this may not happen to you know many of you, but there was a time in my life where probably from the age of 10 till I was about 20 or 21, I would be in the bathroom, right, getting ready or whatever, and get out of the shower or something, and look into the mirror and just had this weird kind of deja vu like feeling come over me and I didn't know really what it was kind of freaked me out at first wanted it to go away but in this feeling and this sounds weird I could kind of feel me looking back at myself in a different way okay and this question came to me and it was who are you and what are you doing here and again, it's a, it's a weird type of feeling to have. It's a really hard question to answer when you're thinking about your purpose and what you're doing here and what you're about and where you're going in life. And again, it initially freaked me out, but after a while I tried to maintain that position, right? Just kind of stay with it. Did I have an answer for it? And I just would sit with it. Unfortunately, Nothing ever came to me, right? There was no answer that I could figure out. But I want you to kind of think about that today as we dive into this. And you probably saw the flyer for the talk tonight, you know. Why are you here and what are you doing, OK? How does it relate to everything that we're going to talk about? We're going to go over these aspects tonight, OK? Overcoming adversity, these challenges, whatever is going on in your life. We all have certain challenges that are happening. How are we going to overcome this, OK? Being curious and taking massive action. We'll dive into that. Surrounding yourself with productive people, friends, mentors, and this whole aspect of networking. Okay? Academics, your learning environment. Your skills, the experiences that you're learning and that you're honing every week. And then finally, creating a path that's unique and meaningful to you. And all of this, I really want to come back to answer this real big question. Why are you here, and are you wasting your time? Okay. Time growing, time developing, time spent with friends, time spent going the extra mile and studying and going to office hours or seeking your professors out, time believing in yourself, potentially time doubting yourself. right? Non-productive time, which we all need a balance of, right? So we can hang out and relax where we're not so hectic and busy all the time. Who are you surrounding yourself with? And what you're doing, is it getting you closer to your goals or is it pushing you further away? Okay. So all of these things I want you to kind of think about as we get into this. Um, before we dive into it real deep, though, I just have to tell you that I like threes. And I don't know what that is. That's intense. I like threes. Even from an exercise prescription standpoint, I do three sometimes, right? With my clients, it's not uncommon for me to do, you know, inside knee activations, three reps on each side, okay? Or a quad stretch to a goose step. We do three on each side. Why do they call this a goose step, though? You know? Anybody know that? It's weird. I have no idea. I get that question a lot. 
But I like threes in that way. From an exercise prescription standpoint, going a little bit further, I like doing three exercises sometimes for three rounds and having three groups of that, okay? Something I've done for a long time. And sometimes it works really well for a certain clientele. I also like the triangle. Three points, three sides. We're gonna use this a little bit, okay? I like threes. Um, the basis or the foundation of what we're gonna talk about today here, physiology and movement, okay? Comes no surprise, health and exercise science. This is what we're gonna dive into a little bit, okay? On this other side, self-reflection and development. And this one is gonna be all about relationships, okay? So these are gonna be kind of the three big keys as we go through this tonight, and each one's gonna have a little bit different emphasis, okay, and influence. I'm gonna dive a little bit into an OAR model. I'll define that a little bit later. That's broken down in threes, okay? And lastly, to finish out our triangle, there's gonna be three Cs. We'll connect all these back together, okay? All right, here we go. First part, challenge. When was the last time you challenged yourself or somebody else challenged you? When was the last time you maybe felt like you weren't worthy or that you couldn't do something or that you wouldn't be able to finish what you started? We all go through these times in life. Or maybe somebody told you something that you didn't really want to hear. Okay. That's tough. When I was in high school, and I'll dive into this a little bit deeper uh, as we go, I didn't do real great early on in high school. And all of a sudden this new peer group that I was hanging out with, they were all talking about college. Going to college and applying for college and FAFSA and what's that? I really had no idea, but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to feel foolish, right, in, in front of my peers. And so I remember going to my high school counselor's office, I sat down, talked with her, and I'll never forget what she said. She told me, she looked me right in my eyes and she said, you are not going to make it in college. Flat out. I've been told that you can't do this, you wouldn't be able to do that, from a lot of different people, even people here at CSU but not those folks from CSU. Uh, and even professionally too, it's, it's happened to me, right? And I've got a ton of stories about that, but you know, I learned really early on that life can be hard and life can be unfair, all right? Even before this story, before when I was younger. But you also know when you go through things like this that there's another path, right? When you get to that fork in the road, you don't have to keep going that way. You don't have to listen to those things or doubt yourself, right? You have another path that you can go down and that's important. So this replaying message of, you know, you're not gonna make it or you can't and so on and so forth gave me a huge chip on my shoulder and I wanted to prove people wrong, but more importantly, I wanted to prove to myself that I could, right? Contra omnia vincimus. Does anybody know what that means? No Latin takers in here? It's all right. Against everything, we win. That's what that means, okay? You cannot and should not take the easy road, okay? There is no reward there. There's no honor in that. The failure and struggle that you go through in your life on whatever scale is instrumental in creating the person that you are meant to be and that you're growing into, okay? I'm a firm believer in overcoming adversity. I've done it many times in my life. I'm sure you have as well. And that really creates that person we are. I've always been physically active, you know, even when I was a young child and grew up playing basketball in different sports and ran track here, played a little bit of football. And, uh, you know, after that, after I graduated, I got in a big time rut. I just, I was personal training and I did not want to go to the gym. There was, that was the last thing I wanted to do was anything physically active. I just, I could, be there for my clients in that way, but for myself, it was completely out of the question. A good friend of mine, who was also an alum of the program, really got me going, he was a strength and conditioning coach, and these workouts that he gave me kind of got my energy back up, right? Got my fire back going again. And then I started, I competed in CrossFit for a little bit, did the open, and then got into SEAL fits, if you haven't heard about that, it's like CrossFit on steroids, don't worry about that. Um, 
and they did Spartan races and, and all these other kinds of things, you know, big mountain bike trips for hundreds of miles. But all of these physical challenges over and over and over in my life, even when I didn't want to do anything and I did make myself, it created this grit in me, this resilience, right? And that energy that it created in me was powerful. It was able to spill over into other aspects of my life. It wasn't just about the physical challenge that I was going through, that I was putting myself through, but it gave me a foundation to stand upon, to respond to other challenges in my life that I didn't have control over, right? When something gets hard, we don't give up. We gotta stay in the fight, no matter how hard it is. We have to keep going. This, I feel, from a physical aspect is kind of the X factor that some people have, but most don't, okay? And if you can find a level, a uh, foundation of physical challenging yourself, I think you'll grow from this quite a bit. In challenges as a whole, perspective has meaning, okay? I'm gonna share a story about my dad. So my dad was much older when, when I was born. He was 50 when I was born. So he was born, he was born in 1930. And he grew up on a former cotton plantation, okay? Him, his siblings, and other cousins all grew up in this one shack, okay? Similar to, I mean, it wasn't that big, but time frame is similar. Even as a young man, you know, he would pick up to 700 pounds of cotton in a day, okay? He went to school, but he spent a lot of time in the field. He lost his mom at a really, really young age. He was four years old when his mom passed away. And he felt that the doctors should have been able to do more to save her. So he wanted to be a doctor, okay? Now he didn't have all the opportunities that I currently have, but he worked in several hospitals. He assisted in autopsies. He was a phlebotomist. He was even invited to, I wanna get this right, Walter Reed Hospital's Armed Forces Institute of Pathology for Medical Photography, which was really prestigious for that time, okay? And he never received a, an MD, but everybody called him Uncle Doc, right? And so challenge is perhaps unwelcome in our lives, but it's also the gift to us. It's the beginning of both knowing oneself and the beginning of deciding to do something Challenges break open the transparency of our lives and make things apparent. Challenge gives us the opportunity to choose, shape ourselves, and to grow. So what are your biggest challenges today? What are you struggling with the most when you think about it? What are those things? Challenges are gonna come and go throughout your life, right? Small, big, petty, and dire. But what matters is how you respond to those challenges. And more importantly here for health and exercise science is you're here. We are here for other people, right? So how you figure out how to deal with the challenges in your life are gonna to relate to how you help other people respond to those challenges in theirs. Because we're health and exercise science, right? That's what we're here about. The next one we're gonna dive into, it's a little bit lighter, okay? So we'll smile. Curiosity. How many of you are curious? Would you feel like you're a curious person? Right? Maybe if you think back to the little kid that you once were, right? Oh, we were so curious, right? The world was so big. There were so many things we didn't know, right? And you must be curious. You're here at CSU. You're here at this talk tonight. So thank you again for coming. It's great. You know, it was noted in a study that curiosity by itself was a huge fundamental building block of professional development. Even though you may be dissuaded to be curious in whatever job you're in. That's odd, right? It's really interesting. You're curious about developing into the person you're becoming here at college. I'm sure we have uh, you know, variety of you from freshmen to seniors or super seniors maybe, who knows, right? But let's talk about some curiosity as it comes to careers in this field, right? So I'm going to rattle some off, and there's going to be, I'm sure, a ton more, but physical therapy, occupational therapy, exercise physiologist, personal trainer, 
Group X instructor, sports psychologist, strength and conditioning coach, wellness coordinator. Maybe you'll be applying to med school. Nutritionist, athletic director, professor, fitness director of something. Community program director or chiropractor, maybe. Registered nurse. Maybe you'll get into corporate, uh, corporate wellness, public health. Maybe cardiopulmonary rehab if you're getting really clinical, right? Let me explain a little bit about my path, right? When I was here at CSU, I knew I wanted to do something with people. Wasn't totally sure exactly what that was, but I knew I wanted to work with people. And as I went through my career here, health and exercise science major, I minored in anatomy and neurobiology, so I thought, maybe med school, maybe, maybe I want to be a doctor. That could be cool. So I did my internship at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And half my time was spent at the Dan Abraham Healthy Living Centers, which now Exos runs and controls. And my other half was spent in uh, you know, medical specialties, you know, observing doctors with whatever specialty I thought it might be interested in. And it was an unbelievable experience. It really gave me a taste of both worlds and what I really was drawn to. I loved the fitness side of things, but I really loved the operating room. I loved being in surgery, right? But then I started to peel back some of the layers in that, right? I didn't have all my prerequisites to apply to med school, okay? I had an opportunity to stay at Mayo and do a graduate program to get my master's and that would fill the rest of my prereqs for med school. Okay, great. I had a little bit of imposter syndrome. I didn't know if I could really do it, you know? And then I talked to more surgeons and doctors I was with and uh, you know, their, their family lives for what they were doing wasn't great. You know, and I know that wasn't necessarily the norm and you can make things work out, but I knew I wanted a family one day. And so with all those things, plus the debt, I was like, uh, maybe not, maybe not. I knew a uh, uh, infectious disease specialist who was 51, still paying back his student loans at the time, which he wasn't struggling, right? He was making great money, but he still had to, I thought, I don't know if I like that, right? But those are the things I'm thinking about as I'm going through this whole transition in my internship. What am I going to do? So I decided to not to go to med school and I was going to move to Florida. Couldn't find a job there. Came back home to Colorado in Denver. Couldn't find a job. Right? So I almost started to sell insurance. What am I doing? Right? Did I just waste all of this time? right, at CSU. And then as the holiday season was getting started, I ended up working for UPS because I needed a job, right? That was very real. And then I finally started working with a company that specialized in in-home training and they had a very high net worth type of clientele and so I started doing that. So I think, okay, now things are going, right? It's not so bad, okay. But we all have a different level of, of drive and ambition and things that we want to do and achieve but I really firmly believe in this aspect of curiosity, right? Where you have to still ask questions, talk to yourself, talk with other people to try and figure out what it is that you really want to do. And one of the things that I really found best uh, to help me, not during that time, but many years later, was talking to myself. How many of you talk to yourself? Like all the time, self, what's going on? How many of you journal? Awesome. I started journaling when I went out on tour with this band uh, two summers ago, summer of 21. One, because I really wanted to capture the memories and the experience of being on tour with a band going all over the place. But really, I also wanted to know and understand when I took the time, was there something else that I was meant to be doing? You know, I like what I do, the company's great, I like my clients and I like our team and everything, but maybe there's something more, what is that? And it's hard to quiet the noise when you're so busy, right? So kudos to you who are journaling and having that conversation with yourself, right? This curious conversation I really feel helps us pay attention to the omens, right? And the omens are nothing more than opportunities, shifts, changes in the universe, however you want to look at it, 
right? This possibility of there's something else also out there for me. Okay? Not everything can be planned to the T. And it really kind of shouldn't, right? Sometimes you just have to go for it and make the most of it, whether it ends up being good or bad, right? You're going to learn something along the way. So I know curiosity has been a huge driver for me personally and professionally, and I think it will be for you too. So there's plenty of days I know where you're up early, maybe you're working a part-time job, going to school or athletics or whatever it may be. There was plenty of days early on when I started my company where I was up and at work at 6 a.m. And with maybe a few hours break in between, I would be done at 7 or 7.30 only to get up the next day and be at work at 6 or 6.30 in the morning again. Right? So I get that. And my grandfather gave me the best quote that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Sometimes you have to just stop and smell the roses. Right? Give yourself a little bit of grace there. So guess what? The music isn't working great, but we're going to stop and smell the roses here for a minute. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Everybody knows a fist bump, right? We're going to change it. I'm going to put my twist on it, okay? You're going to do a fist bump with the side of your fist. Boom, right there, like that. Okay? I want to see how many fist bumps you can get while this next song is playing. And it's only a clip. It's not a full song. But I need you to get up and get moving again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. Here we go. How many fist bumps can you get? Let's go. Hey, there we go. Come get. I'll give you one too. Hey, hey, hey. Right on. More fist bumps. More fist bumps. There we go. Come on. How many can you get? I know health and exercise science is competitive. Let's go. Oh, there's not much moving over there. I think we just got in a cipher. Okay, stop. Stop. Done. Done. All right. Go ahead and grab a seat. Come back to your seat. Nice job. That was great. Who won? Just joking. Oh, Wendy won. Yep. No one's arguing with that. Very nice. I wasn't really. All right. So we're going to change gears. Remember I mentioned this OAR model in the intro? That's what this is, okay? And this is gonna go into a little bit of ontology. We're not gonna go super deep, but ontology is just the one way of being in the world, okay? Where you are in the world and how that works, okay? And I think this will also help with your curiosity a little bit, okay? Even if you don't think you're a curious person. So, we're gonna start off with this. We, or I should say, you are the observer, okay? You are the observer through language, emotion, and your body, all right? We show up in the world in a physical body with emotions that help us make sense of every moment, enabling us to tell a story about ourselves using language. If you change one part of the, of, of the observer, the other parts move with it. Okay? When you change how you hold your body, your emotions and language shift too. Similarly, if you change the language of your current narrative, it transforms your physical and emotional dispositions. Okay? And choosing a different emotional state shows up in how you hold your body, its energy, and the story you tell. And when it comes to curiosity, we have to change one of these things to allow the others to follow. And please know this works in the positive, but it also works in the negative just as well. Okay? Let's take the challenge that I just issued to you, right? The fifth, fist bumps. Okay? Did your energy state change? Physically, your body, did it change? Right? And it changed quickly. Your emotions changed. Right? If you were to tell a story about that, would the language you choose to use change? Probably, right? So I want to re relate this all to how do you want to show up for yourself? Anxious? Stressed? 
overwhelmed, complaining, critical, depressed? Or do you want to show up as energetic, wanting to help others, encouraging, positive, cheerful, unconcerned? And then how does this relate to the way you engage with others? How are you seen by others? What language do you use to describe yourself on a regular basis? Or what energy do you have to study or to pursue a goal, to think, to plan? I have a very strong rule in my gyms and in my house. We do not have negative self-talk, period. Okay? And I'm going to apply that to you today. Okay? Negative self-talk is not doing you any favors. Right? And we know that. But sometimes we get caught up in that as well. Right? I have another rule. You're not allowed to say, I can't. Just remove it from your vocabulary. Right? Because everything's possible. Some of you may know Tammy Baudet. She was my supervisor at HP when I did a practicum there many years ago. And when I came out of that practicum, and this is nothing against Tammy, I wish she was here right now, but I couldn't stand corporate wellness. It was terrible for me. It, wasn't, it was not fun. It was old school. It wasn't engaging. I just thought, I will never get into corporate wellness. Regardless of anything I do, I'm never going to do it. Flash forward to 2010, a really great client of mine said, hey, could you set up a wellness program for me and my executive team? I had to stay curious. I had to be curious about that. And I said yes in 2010. And corporate wellness is one of our largest service lines to this day. Okay. So don't ever feel like you're locked into something because you made one decision before. Remain curious. Remain open. Okay? You never know what's going to happen. Go for the ride. Okay? This is going to be an interactive part of the talk tonight because I'm talking too much and I want to hear from you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask a few questions to one of you just randomly, okay? And then we'll skip to the next person. But when I call on you or point to you, I want you to give me your name and then your emphasis or concentration. I'm not sure if we're all Health and Exercise Science Club or if there's any pre-health folks here too. So I just want to make sure we get that, okay? All right? Good? We're ready. You. <laughs> My name's Maya, and I'm a sports mad. Sports mad? All right, very good. Okay, so my first question for you is, what's the hardest class you've taken? Um, I'm currently in general chemistry, too, and I'm struggling. <laughs> All right, you and many others, I'm sure, okay. I'm sure. Okay, we're going to change gears. We're going to call on somebody else. Right there. Uh, my name's Noah. I'm sports mad, and yeah. Okay, great, perfect, perfect, we're figuring it out. Okay, who is your favorite professor, your most favorite professor here? Probably Wendy or Rick Perry. Boom. Good nod, good nod. That was good, I see what you did there too. I see. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yes. My name's Gabby and I'm sports fed. A lot of sports men in the house. All right, very cool. Okay, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Telekinesis. Telekinesis, that was really quick. Nice. You've, she's been journaling, talking to herself. What would I want to be able to do? Very cool. All right, okay, last one. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. This is going to be a tough one. All right, if there was an animal that embodied your spirit, what would your spirit animal be? Probably a lion. Ooh, right on. Very good. That was quick, too. OK. Awesome. How many of you can connect to any of these answers? Yeah? Some head nods, maybe? Yeah? Anybody else a lion? Anybody else sports mad, right? Good, good, good. 
You've probably heard of the longevity study, right, that Harvard has done, right? It's over eight, if you haven't heard of it, don't worry about it, you'll find out more. It's eight plus decades long, and what they were looking for is what, what in life gives you fulfillment, right? What is success, what is happiness, what is all of those things that we're all trying to get or receive at some point? What makes us the most happy? And at the end of the day, it's relationships. That's the number one thing that came out in this study, okay? And for the purposes of this talk, your community, right? Your community of HES, of your fellow students, your professors, the connections that you have right now here in this place are irreplaceable. They really are. Second part of this is I want you to cultivate meaningful relationships on a regular basis. And really for tonight, I want you to find a mentor if you don't already have one. Now, my mentor while I was here was this woman here, Barb Musselwhite, who was with CSU for years and years and years. She retired quite a few years ago. Um, she was amazing. She was a first gen student, as am I, right? So parents did not go to college. Uh, there might be one or two of you in here too, which would be cool. Uh, her and Paul Thayer right there started the key academic community, which I was in the inaugural year of, and it's still going on today, which is great. I didn't really know, you probably know much better now than when I was your age in this, in this situation, the power of networking, right, and connecting with people. And one of the most beautiful aspects of what I do is I come into contact with people from very diverse backgrounds, beliefs, points of view, professions, all over the place. I train the editor of the Denver Post for a long time. I train um, you know, the former president of Quiznos, right, which eventually merged into Smashburger. Um, I got clients or jobs or gigs based on just people I knew in introductions, right? Um, and it really came down to her, right? She would meet me on campus, we would meet somewhere to talk about something, and we would just go for a walk around campus, and she knew everybody. And the cool thing about what she did is she would introduce me to somebody, and she knew enough about that person and enough about me to understand what our connections were. And immediately I felt like, oh, I found somebody, right? which is really powerful because you never know what those are gonna turn into. If I fast forward a little bit more in my career earlier on, we would do marathon relay races, right, for the Colfax Marathon, really cool. So I had a client that was finishing his leg and I made it a point to be at every leg so I can see my clients finish that hand off to the next person. And so I finished this leg with another guy, my client did, and he said, hey, I want you to introduce you to John. John's great, he's looking for a trainer. Okay, great, hey, you guys should connect, I think you should go. And as soon as I saw him, he wasn't just a John, he was John Hickenlooper, who was the mayor of Denver at the time, which turned to be governor of Colorado, ran for a presidential bid, and now he's a senator. Random, right? Just because. He, John, this guy John, connected me, called me one night and said, hey, I want you to give you know, this guy a call. He wants to talk to you about another, another buddy that wants to start training. I think it'll be a great opportunity for you. Okay, great. So I call this guy, Chris. I talk to Chris in the evening. Next couple days, I go and meet with this other guy he's talking about. It was Nathaniel Rateliff, and I ended up training him, and that's how I ended up on tour with him in the band and working with him, all right? And so th the point I'm trying to make with this is all of it started with her. I didn't understand the power of networking and how close our community is in health and exercise science. It's really tight. Everybody knows everybody in some kind of way, okay? And all of these introductions and a ton more that I experienced, none of them happened on social media. All of this was in person, right? There is a very different level of connection with people in person, face to face, than there is in a text message or an email or a Microsoft Teams meeting, right? So I would challenge you 
to connect with people in person, right? Find a mentor. So how do you find a mentor? How do we do this? Well, first, I think you need to know that people in general, and especially here at CSU, they want to help. It's just kind of in the DNA. And if you ask somebody for help, it's highly unlikely they're going to say no to you, right? That would be pretty rude. So there's already somebody probably waiting for you to ask. All you got to do is ask. Find someone who you want to learn from or you admire or they're in a place in their life that you look up to or they have a certain aura about them or an energy about them that just kind of draws you to them, right? That's there for a reason. Listen to that. And then ask to connect about something you're working on, an ambition you have, a question you might have, something you're struggling with that you need help with, right? It's okay to be vulnerable in that way and ask for help when you really need it, okay? People will be there for you. And then once you find a mentor and you start connecting with people, how do you become that go-to person to be selected, where you are top of mind for people to say, nope, 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 I need that person in whatever you're doing, right? How do you do that? Depend on where you're at. Know your trade. Know your stuff. Don't just know that. Be really good at it and why you do it and how you do it. Understand all of the aspects of it, right? That's that skill acquisition, that experience that you're trying to create here and learn and grow into. If you're not at that point yet, focus on those classes. I know, I know. Don't just memorize stuff to pass the test, right? Because you will be weeded out in the real world. Trust me, we deal with that with employees when we're looking to hire all the time, okay? I think another thing you can do is humble yourself. Know that you don't know it all, right? We all get to a point where we really think we kind of know everything about everything and we don't, right? So just be a student of lifelong learning. Help yourself that way in that, in that regard. Engage with your professors. Understand how you relate to and how you're seen by other people, right? An energy standpoint. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And then pay attention to the details. Hold yourself to a high standard. I don't ever expect people to work as hard as I do, but I still have a high standard for our team. Right? I got an email. This was recently in the last few months. We're looking for a new team member to bring on board. We're getting busy. We're still growing. And uh, I got a personal referral from one of our instructors. Hey, this guy is great. I want to connect you to. He'd be a good asset to the team. I said, okay, great. So I connected with this guy. He uh, replied back. We had a meeting set up, first interview, great. I replied a couple days later and said, hey, just send me your resume right? when you have a second. Hey, great. Never heard back from him. OK, well, interview time's coming up. So the morning of the interview, I, I sent him another email. Hey, if you could just send me your resume real quick, that'd be great. I just want to make sure I'm prepared for the interview. He wrote an email back and said, Hey, yeah, um, I'm at the airport and my flight got delayed. And so I was just wondering if we could just delay this interview to like maybe the next couple days because I'm going to have to sleep when I get back home. And yeah, those bridges burn really easy, right? Don't make that mistake. Be professional in your responses. Always follow up and uh, make sure you treat people with respect because you never know who you're going to be talking to and who they know. All right. One thing in life is absolutely going to happen, and that's change. Hi, COVID. <laughs> right? I know that rocked everybody's world. Change is inevitable. Hands down, it will happen. But your progress is not. So you've got to figure out a way when things change how you're going to put in the effort to get around this and to progress and figure that out. My high school counselor, right, told me I wouldn't make it. I graduated high school with a 2.8 and very average SAT scores. She was probably right. And maybe that was one of the biggest gifts she gave to me. 
that I needed to believe in myself a little bit more. The inaugural year of Key Academic Community, we were not the kids that were picked that were gonna do well. Mm -mm, quite the opposite, right? We probably weren't going to do that well. But by the end of the school year, we had a higher retention rate than the rest of the freshman class. I walked onto the CSU track team in the fall, and then I got a stress fracture in my foot, so I had to redshirt. Bum me out. So I had a bunch of friends that were playing football, and they said, hey, you should come try out in the spring. Huh. Okay, I'll try that out. My, my coaches told me I couldn't do it on the track team. They're like, nope, you can't do that. So I did it. And I made it. And uh, I never played high school football. I still have a school record in the 4 by one by the way. It's still on the wall. I ended my time here as in numerous honor societies, distinguished senior, presidential student leader, and I ended up giving the commencement speech for our college. And then I'll give you a quick snapshot of what happened next. I interned at the Mayo Clinic. I already mentioned that. Couldn't find a job. Then finally did training. And then I remember I was working so much I had to take naps in my car. That was a tough time. In September of 05, I started the company, and I'll just give you a quick snapshot after that. I started our group exercise program, subsequently started our corporate wellness program, then my first daughter was born. Opened our first facility, and then I started our sport, perform sport performance program. I was nominated to won a 40 under 40 award by the DBJ, and then my second daughter was born. And then my grandparents both passed away. We started working with VF Corporation. They moved their global headquarters to Denver. That was great. I went on tour. And a year ago in April, my father passed away. And now I'm working my way back into speaking. Because I want to try and have an impact on some people. Yeah. That's a very, very brief 20 years. I don't think I'm that old. I don't think so. But the purpose of this, did I have all this figured out when I was a freshman? By the time I graduated? By the time I did my internship? Not a chance, right? There's no way. You do not need to have everything figured out right now, okay? You have to know there's no map. There is no GPS to tell you that you made a wrong turn. Sometimes you just gotta learn by living and just keep going. Remember, it's the struggle and the pain points, it's the process that develop you into the person you're going to be, which is the outcome. You have the power to create an extraordinary life, but it doesn't happen by accident. Okay? Embrace the challenges so you can grow from each. Remain curious. Be a risk taker. Develop connections. Give as much value as you receive from people and strive for mastery in your classes, build your skill set. And really overall, don't be afraid to fail. So, how are you going to challenge yourself in the next 30 days? This is my challenge to each and every one of you tonight. What are you going to take from this talk or something that you thought about in these last 45 minutes, and what are you gonna do? Will you do something that makes you uncomfortable? Will you challenge yourself in some kind of way physically where it really causes some self-doubt where you think you might not be able to finish it? Will you adopt those OAR principles, that whole element of body, language, and emotion? You tell your friends, advisors, or professors something that you're passionate about, something you're trying to create energy around to guide you in that direction. Will you find a mentor? Will you be okay with accepting the struggle or whatever you may be going through and using that as a positive catalyst for an outcome? What do you want to do in the next 30 days? You have a really great opportunity right now to move the needle in your life, even if it's just a little bit. So what we're gonna do, and you came prepared, I appreciate that. 
is I want you to write down in your phone, paper, I don't care what it is, what you're going to achieve in the next 30 days. Don't open your email. Don't open your social media. Watching all of you, okay? I want you to write it down now. I'm gonna be quiet. Take two or three minutes to really think about this. What do you really want? Make it a short journal if it's not coming to you. Type some things out that resonate with you from tonight. The trick with this also is you probably already know what you need to do. You just may not want to do it. But that's where you need to start. That uncomfortableness in that aspect is what you need to focus on now. Okay. That's great. I think we got a couple more people, right? And that's great. Keep going. What I want you to also do with this, and you do it however you want, I would prefer face to face. I want you to share this with two people. A friend, coworker, somebody in class, you know, professor, advisor, whatever, mentor would be great. But I want you to share it with two people, at least two people, right? Be vulnerable enough to bring yourself out of those woods and just put it in the open, okay? You'll be rewarded for it, trust me. Excellent. To wrap this up, I wanna say, Thank you to Dr. Braun, he's not here, but thank you to Wendy also for helping to set this up, to Kim and Sarah for rolling out the red carpet for me every time I come up here, which is awesome, thank you so much. Isabel, thank you so much for the emails back and forth and all of that, I know we went back and forth quite a few times. And then Avery, thank you for being here. I forgot your name, sorry. Asher. Asher, God, dang it, I knew it. Um, thank you everybody. So I'm also gonna leave the last little bit of this open if you, for Q&A, if you wanna ask questions about anything, more than happy to dive into it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable asking in a group setting, I'll hang out after you and come up to talk to me afterwards too. All right, but thank you so much. I appreciate you coming.